Hey Guru Nation, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, it's theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you so much for watching. It uh, really means a lot. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to the blog. Shoot me a text, 949-415-6256, just to say what's up, if you want. Uh, or to ask a question, right, like this person did, although this person did it on LinkedIn. So you can ask, you can find me everywhere, right? Social buttons are on my website, on the blog. Uh, I'm not hiding, okay? I'm out there. You can reach me. I'll get back to you. Instagram and Snapchat have been my favorite. But this person got to me on LinkedIn, and I know LinkedIn's extremely important for this industry, so I, I'm on there. I, that's probably one of the older social networks that I've been on. One of the first. All right, so today's question is from someone who is a new CRA, and their previous background was not clinical research. So first of all, uh, sir, if you can please message me back after you watch this video, how did you get a CRA position without any clinical research background? Uh, because there are other people in your, in your position who are not CRAs yet, but want to be CRAs, and they don't have any clinical research experience. Usually the way I recommend they get into a CRA position is to work as a coordinator or as a regulatory affairs specialist and work their way up, but you got in right away. So this video is for you, um, a brand new CRA, no research experience whatsoever. I want to understand milestones, okay, study milestones, particularly startup phase, conduct and closeout phase, timelines, key milestones, okay. You're going to hear this a lot when you're not just a CRA, but when you're a research site too. I mean, anyone who's done any protocol it, uh, has heard and seen key milestones. So for your situation, since you're a CRA, you're probably going to first get alerted to key milestones during your uh, kickoff meeting for, that your CRO is going to conduct to introduce you to your study team. And they'll do a kickoff meeting for every protocol that you're a monitor on. So they introduce you to the study team. Sometimes the sponsors are involved. Um, sometimes it's just the CRO team. The first time you'll probably see key milestones is at the kickoff meeting. And prior to that, actually, there is an investigator meeting, but you may be you may be brought on after the investigator meeting, so you may not even need to worry about that one. Uh, so then, kickoff meeting is one milestone, right? Uh, IRB submission. Typically, the sponsor needs to submit the protocol uh, as well as the the template for the informed consent to the IRB. All right, and then whichever sites are using that central IRB will be allowed to use that protocol and participate in that study and use the informed consent template uh, to participate in the study and start screening. So your first key milestone will be IRB submission of these documents. And then your next key milestone is IRB approval. Typically it's the protocol and the informed consent form. Now, each site also has to get their own IRB approval. Even if they're using central IRB, each site has to get IRB approval as well for their site. Okay, so you may have many different key milestones when it comes to IRB approval. You'll have one for the sponsor getting the protocol approved and getting the template of the informed consent approved, and then you may have sub IRB approval milestones for each site. Okay, so there may be um, a goal, all right? All sites need to have IRB approval by this date, okay? That could be your IRB approval milestone. The next milestone is the site initiation visit, okay? So that's when, I'm a contract CRA, I'm actually doing a couple of these in two weeks. So SIV, if you don't know what a SIV is, what a site initiation visit is, I have a lot of videos on this topic, I'm not going to get into that in this video. But the site initiation visit is another milestone, okay? And, and I'm going in order. The one after that is first subject, first visit. So screening visit, right? The first subject visit. Uh, that's another milestone. Then the database goes live. So the EDC system is now up and running. Sites, since they already had their first subject visit, should be entering data in the EDC. For next milestone, first subject dose. Okay, this is 
Another term could be first subject randomized. Okay, this is when they actually start taking the study drug. So remember, subjects don't start taking study drugs for the most part at screening. They start at randomization, otherwise known as baseline visit. And then you'll have database locks uh, in between. So some sponsors do quarterly database locks. Uh, so those are always milestones too, and they typically have those planned. All right, so first database lock will be on this date. Another milestone will be the last subject that took a, the drug. Okay, so they try to, this will be the last data point for a subject that took the drug, and then the next milestone will be last subject, last visit. All right, so this is the last subject, final visit, there's no more data to be collected from the study, uh, from any site at this point. Then they have the database hard lock, all right, the final database lock. Um, and then they have closeout visit, and that's it. I'm sure there's more, but I'm actually going through a couple different pickoff meeting agendas that I'm looking at in front of me, and I've sort of combined and uh, picked and choose like the ones that would be most appropriate for this video. So hopefully this helps you out. Key milestones in clinical research, thank you for the question. I actually never did a video on this, so thank you very much, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.